Hello, Lorenzo here. Welcome back to a mission a day. Today we're doing mission 16. And before we are proceeding, a quick review of the state of affairs. Now, as you can see, we are panning around the space center. This is something I could I completely forgot you could do, so enjoy this non-standard introductory view. Money-wise, we are at 90,000 credits, so rather healthy. And we have a few things that we'd like to do, or at least I have a few things that I would like to do. One of them is send an ion-powered, ultra-efficient, lightweight probe to Joule. The other is continue the exploration of Val, uh, establish a manned space station around it, or around Joule, put a lander on Val, either a robotic one or a manned one, or, and this is something that we could get mission payout for, is send a probe to Duna. Now, a few of these plans still have problems. For example, the ion-powered probe. We did unlock the ion drives here in the R&D building, but they are incredibly power-hungry. I'm just looking where uh, they're here. They are incredibly power-hungry, these ion engines. And one thing we did not yet unlock is the big solar, uh, the big solar panels. Um, I've lost them now here in the view. Um, where are they? The big solar panels, the gigantor sol ah, here they are. The massive batteries and the massive solar arrays, which we will definitely need, or at least they would for sure come in handy for powering an ion drive. So we cannot do that yet. As to the manned space station, either over Kerbin or over Joule or anywhere else, I want to make this modular, so put uh, different modules in orbit and then dock them together. For this, Obviously, we're going to need docking ports, which, as of now, we don't have yet. Now, these these we have, and hey, we do have a docking port. Great, so that's one thing out of the way. We can launch a space station. In fact, we will start this tomorrow, because I already made what we're going to launch today. We just discovered we do have the docking ports, but our engineers forgot to look at it. Um, for the Juna, this is perfectly reasonable we could do this. However, I look at the launch windows, and the launch window to Juna and the launch window to Jewel, the upcoming ones, they are only 14 days apart. This means that were we to launch something to Juna, we would not get paid until the... Uh, we, we would not get paid in time to launch anything to Jewel. So... We are going to skip the Duna launch, even though that would give us a lot of science. And we're going to go instead go ahead and launch something to Val, our decided target of interest, decided by DICE about 10 days ago. We're going to launch something to Val in that launch window and we need to have some time to put some funds together. This is the lander I've come up with so far. It has one of the newfangled nuclear engines. It has a lander can, but don't, be, don't worry, it will not be manned. This will serve to, well, at least put something on Vol, where if Kerbals show up in the future, they will be able to enter somewhere and do their sciences. Oh, one thing I forgot, which I'm going to really quickly add, is the science laboratory, because the purpose of this mission, rather than landing something on Vol for the first time, uh, well, not rather than, in, in addition to landing something on Vol for the first time, uh, this will serve to hopefully get a metric ton of science, allowing us to unlock some of those more advanced techs that we will need to make our interplanetary dreams come true. Nothing so fancy today. Today we are doing a rather mundane mission, at least let's hope it's going to be mundane. Mission 16, and we are again going to combine two missions. This launcher resembles yesterday's launcher a lot. It has the same satellite, in fact, that will be brought in a different trajectory this time, and it again has the same capsule. The missions we are going to do, as you might be guessing right now, are Vostok 2 to bring a man in an orbital flight around Kerbin, uh, it has to be a orbit with the minimum periapsis of 80 kilometers, it has to remain there for 6 hours, and the guy has to do an EVA. All fine, all good. Gives us 100,000 credits. Additionally, we are going to do the ComSat contract number 2. It's a fairly high orbit, 1.5 million meters, so 1,500 kilometers, with a 46 degree inclination, and again, it almost has to be almost circular. So, the mission profile for this, or at least the plan, is to launch all of this into a low orbit, about 80,000 kilometers, uh, 80,000 meters. Detach the capsule so it can spend its six hours there, and then increase 
the orbit to 1500 kilometers where the inclination will be fixed there because that's most efficient at high altitude altitude so far so good we're going to try and launch on a somewhat inclined trajectory right from the start because uh, from the ground that's free and from orbit a inclination change is rather costly the rocket has been upgraded a little bit, it needs to go farther, it needs to go higher, it's got four boosters on the side now, they will fire two by two and I'm not expecting to need the central engine until they burn out. Now you might notice these nose cones here on the boosters, they are not just superfluous, they are there to provide aerodynamic drag reduction, something that is a very real concern with this uh, Ferrum Aerospace mod I'm using. Also, I'm going to try not an ascent too quickly because, well, the craft could burn up on ascent, which is not very nice at all. As you're accustomed to, as long as everything goes to plan, this will be fast forwarded and there will be a jaunty little music piece. So enjoy the launch and see you in a bit. Right, here we are, we put the satellite, or at least the whole launch vehicle in the orbit and I have now firmly decided I don't like these missions, they are far too stringent. This one for example asks for a eccentricity of less than one part in 10,000 on an orbit that's 1500 kilometers high, so that's an eccentricity of Let's have a look, 1 in 10,000, that's an accuracy of less than 100 meters on an orbit this large. So if you go 1583-800, if you go 1583-400, and uh, this is just sufficient. So uh, it makes no sense really, no, no satellite in real life does this. But we managed, and only just by uh, enabling time acceleration, because if the ship rotates, you, if, the, if the ship rotates, thank you for talking, um, you, you maybe you saw it then everything fluctuates and doesn't even count anymore so this is far too precise but at any rate we did it we're going to finish the mission once again we didn't need to separate the launch vehicle even though it was a small rocket this had more than enough Delta V and well the employer the contractor whoever it is can use this um, satellite as he wishes do we have any sensors on it we do not have any sensors on it so Oh, we do have the seismometer. Oh, I was planning to make take a seismic reading while on Kerbin. Well, obviously that failed. And what we still have is the mission, the manned probe that has been in orbit for a few hours now. At least I hope that counts. Otherwise, we are going to have to do another time warping session. I hope this reads from the mission elapsed time instead of... No, it starts counting over from here. So even though Bob has been in space for quite a while, his mission recorder doesn't... Uh, his mission recorder, it wasn't on, so it doesn't count. What I'm going to do is I'm going to raise his orbit ever so slightly. And to raise his orbit so that we have a little bit more time acceleration available. 
Now this tank and these small engines, they have about 200 meters per second of delta V, so I'm not going to do this in fact, because that would probably leave us, uh, that would most definitely leave us stranded. So we're got just going to have to soldier through, I'm going to m mash the time acceleration, and I will fast forward this for you because it's n not the like, most exciting thing. See you in a bit, after six hours actually. Right, so here we are, six hours and five minutes later, the brave Bob is out on his EVA, mandatory to stay outside for five minutes, you can at least back an EVA report back with him, and we are now headed back into the capsule, and then back to the planet. I've decided I don't like these time goals, I mean, stay in orbit for 6 hours or stay out on EVA for 5 minutes, it doesn't really change anything, there's no life support in the game. If I were to get one of the plugins that add life support, which incidentally is one of the things I'm considering to do for future missions, then this would be interesting because it would lead to a design challenge. Now it's just senseless waiting and I, oh, I don't really see the point to be honest. Anyway back we are all the mission goals have been achieved all that remains now is for us to get back down to the planet now remember we have deadly re-entry installed so this re-entry is not a trivial thing we have the heat shield on the capsule and yesterday we had no problems at all re-entering but that was from a suborbital trajectory today we are going to come in a little bit hotter from an actual orbital trajectory from about 300 kilometers so i'm going to pack the periapsis at 24, 37, that's probably going to be too high. So I'm going to put it at 20, no, not 20, I want to. I want 29, 28, so, somewhere around 30, so that the re-entry vector isn't too steep, but also not too shallow. 36, I'm gonna go with 36, and then I'll just not burn up all the delta V. I'll leave, a f I'll, I'll burn 50 meters per second and see where we're at. I'm going to time accelerate until the node. Oh yeah, these engines, they will take a while to scrub this down to V, so I best turn them on. And fortunately, we can physical warp this. I put the tiniest engines on the craft because they are the lightest, but they don't pack a huge punch. So I'm going to enable physical time warp, which is quite safe to do with the craft this small. And here we go, at 50 meters per second of delta V burned. What is our periapsis now it's 45 that's definitely too high so I'm just going to burn whilst looking at it 40 I'm going to go for a nice round 30 it should probably do it so 30 29 and a half kilometers periapsis this is going to be our re-entry angle yes so now all I have to do is separate this stage so that that won't be a problem way it goes and now it is a question of time warping into the atmospheric interface so let's do that and hope that I my no my zero planning whatsoever gave us a dawn approach it did not we are going to land at night we might get to see a sunrise in the atmosphere so mm, all I need to do now is orient the heat shield into what will shortly become the very hot side due to the shock heating of re-entry. As of now, that is just tumbling, so I'm going to hit the SAS and pointing backwards. The heat shield on this capsule is built in, it's not a, not a separate part, but this has been modified by the plugin. Look, we have ablative shield, 250 points remaining, and hopefully that is enough to keep us safe. Going to ex activate the physical time warp again until we are actually starting to decelerate. Ooh, no, 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 I tr just tried to control that with physical time warp and that is a decidedly bad idea. Just going to put it right there on the retrograde vector and enable that again. So while we wait for Bob Kerman to soar to his hopefully graceful and safe landing, we can discuss what we are going to do tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to launch a space station, or at least a part of it. It will be manned and it will occupy the skies over Kerbin for the foreseeable future. However, its ultimate purpose is to 
depart for Vol. Uh, yes, it's going to be a space station around Vol, but it will be constructed around Kerbin. I think this should be an interesting approach to doing that. So that module will be launched. We will probably still tack on a COM satellite to pay for all these shenanigans and hopefully it will not be a horrendously difficult one as today's was. Well, it wasn't difficult, but it was decidedly finicky. Um, I will have fast forwarded all of that, but trust me, it was very finicky. So we are already cooling down. I think this re-entry was bang on. We are at 20 kilometers now, only at one kilometer a second remaining. So pretty pleased with that. We didn't lose too much of the heat shield, about 75 points, or we're still losing bits of it, still ablating away. But it's not heat. It's not heating up too badly. So. That was pretty well. So from an orbit, a re-entry altitude of about 30 kilometers appears safe, at least for a pod with just a heat shield. We did lose 100 points in the heat shield, so the smallest heat shield available, which only supplies 75 points, might not make it in this instance. Now we're at 14 kilometers and already have scrubbed most of our speed, so I'm happy with that. I think the max g-forces sustained by Bob were about 2.6 so that's very very pedestrian as well uh, overall oh no 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 what did I just do I just deactivated the stability control angling the heat shield away from the area of friction fortunately we are not going that fast anymore but as you can see the pod is cooling down it definitely did pick up some friction heat fortunately this mistake happened now and not a while ago. Had it happened earlier, we would probably have been toast. So these are all things that require attention with this plugin. For now, I'm just going to deploy the parachutes to angle it the right way. This could have helped maybe if we had deployed that earlier to supply a little bit of drag and to angle the pod in the correct decision. For now, I'm just going to use the stability control to keep that oriented straight. Well, you've all seen this before so I'm going to time warp and take care to not have time warp on when the parachute deploys because then it will more likely than not shear off and drop Bob to his death anyway. Right so that happened just fine. Parachute has been deployed and we're coming in for a great grass landing. I think Bob will plant another flag here because why not? This is an area we've not visited before even though it's on the planet and perhaps he will get to bring back a surface sample so that we might get a little bit of science after all. So, thank you Bob Kerman, going to cash in the mission and we are at 200,000 credits. Should be enough to make an interesting space station. Or at least fund our probe to Vol. So, cash-wise, the mission is looking great. Well, the mission, the mission is certainly looking great, but the space program as a whole is also in a somewhat decent shape top dollar written like a true rap king dollar 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 here we go now bob take your surface sample yep dirt no science value there eva report no science value there still we're going to bring them back he will write his personal memoirs based on these reports so getting into the capsule getting back to the space center and let's recover this craft also yesterday's craft, I had not recovered it yet, but fortunately we can still do that. So heading into the tracking station, and let's recover some craft. Space around Kerbin is starting to be a little bit crowded, just the way we like it. There's a space program going on, so there should be some stuff in space. So we have mission 16 here landed at Kerbin, recovered that, and we will be getting 19 science, no we have 19 science, we got 6.5 science. Not a lot, but hey, we got something. Mission 15 from the splashdown point can be recovered also, and this will give, give us 2.7 science. So I think it is clear we are not getting a lot of science here from Kerbin, but at least we clean up our mess and that's what counts. So come back tomorrow to see me launch a space station, hopefully make some more credits and then the day after tomorrow we can launch something or other to Vol or add on to the space station, depending on how these things go. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. If you liked it, want to see these future episodes, be sure to subscribe. Click like, share it on your wall on Facebook or whatever you kids are using these days. Anyway, thank you for doing that.
that's all I say at the end of these videos, and that's all I'll be saying today. See you tomorrow. Goodbye.